Hello everyone, this is James Shore with another Test Driven Development video. Picking up where I left off in the last episode, today is January 9th, and what we were doing was working on the save file and save file test. Um, and so far I'm not really thrilled about what we've got. It's It's got a long way to go. Right now, what we have is something that is actually going to save out the contents of the file. Um, it's it's um, not very pretty though. I don't really like it. The file format is really simplistic. It is uh, not at all backwards compatible or really compatible with anything else. I feel like there's probably a better way to do it. And the other thing is, is that this value here is uh, not actually correct. So what happens is the dollars, the valid dollars class, uh, it, even if it does save the original value, it doesn't write it out. Um, so what we have here is we're creating a valid dollars, one dollar and twenty three cents, but what's getting written out is just the one. And that's interesting to me. When we actually write the real code, or you know, run the actual application, we type in one twenty three, it formats as one dollar but then um, just sort of stands hangs out there and I guess that was a decision we made not to reformat the field when we moved away but looking at that I think that was a mistake so we have a couple of choices here our save phone file format can actually save the entire value because I think it would be weird to save a file and then reload it and have it have the values change or maybe when we move away from the field we need this to reformat. I'm kind of leaning towards the idea of having this reformat when we move away. Uh, I like the consistency of that. Um, of course, if it's an invalid value, then we don't want it to reformat. So, yeah, this does raise the question of what do we do Um, need to decide. Need to decide what to do when with original user entered values. Reformat them. And what about invalid values? Um, so, and that of course is going to affect how we save things. Do we want to save the actual value? Uh, do we want to save 1.23 in the file? Or do we just care about the original, you know, the, the part that we show, the one? And I think relevant to that is the question of, well, what do we actually store in the class? Well, that we store as an actual double. So, So since we're storing that as a double, now we, I think, I honestly think that if we're going to persist valid dollars, we need to persist it, you know, as is. What if we just serialized it? I don't, that, that's a bit ugly. Serialization um, as an API is a bit ugly. It, it really locks us into this sort of internal Java representation. But let's see what happens if we do that. So we just doing this is kind of an experiment. It's complaining about the UID. Let's ignore that if we can. Um, what happens now if we say I don't remember how to serialize an object in Java. Um, 
I don't think serialization is really appropriate for this type of thing. Um, I think it's useful for for network. Well, it was useful once upon a time for network networked uh, object passing around. I actually wrote a program a long time ago, 1999, I think, where we used the Java serialization API to create a distribution layer. But um, that was okay because as the Java, you know, it was all internal and it was all very ephemeral. A file can last for years and I don't want to depend on the intricacies of how Java does serialization in that file. Uh, someday I might want to use a different language other than Java and I don't want to have to deserialize Java objects in that other language. So let's see. Yeah, we use object output stream. Hmm. Let's see what that says. Yeah, this is what I did, was I reconstituted objects on another host. Um, this, so what I'm trying to do is come up with a very simple persistence mechanism. And by simple, I don't mean the easiest to program. I mean the one that is most straightforward, involves the least code, involves the least third-party code that somebody has to understand in order to use this. Um, and now I, I'm helped along in that by not having been working in the Java world uh, for a while, so I'm not up on all the latest third-party libraries. So some of you listening to this may be a little frustrated that I'm not using your library of choice. Uh, it's not because I rejected that library, it's because I actually don't know about it yet. Um, so... So one way to approach this would be to have the valid dollars serialize themselves. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and take that out. Uh, another way of doing it uh, would be to use the two-string method, which is the way I'm doing it now. Uh, the problem with that is we lose data. You know, this reminds me of a great pattern language written by Ward. Ward Cunningham called the Episodes Pattern Language, where it covers a, oh, no, not, not Episodes. That's not it. Uh, this is a different one. Ch checks Pattern Language. That's it. Um, where he talks about a lot of approaches to managing data. He's got whole value, which basically says that Everything uh, should be represented as an object. Uh, exceptional value, which is like my invalid dollars, talks about using real objects for uh, objects that don't have values. Um, echo back. I think this is the one, yeah, echo back. Convert what the user enters into the real code. So. Maybe that's what we want to do, is we'll just discard lower values. Um, our valid dollars has to keep all the precision, but from the user's perspective, that precision isn't important in the data they're entering, or actually, we're deliberately making it unimportant. So if we go here, do we want to distinguish between 2 and 255? It does change the results slightly. You can see the numbers change as I put those pennies in. But for the program I'm writing, do I need those pennies? I would say not. Um, on the other hand, it really bugs me to potentially throw away data. And also, the idea of having 
this depend on the implementation implementation of two string also bugs me um, because I could change the way two string works at any time just for aesthetic reasons. So yeah, I don't want this to be dependent on two string as it is now. That's that's how it's currently working, but I think that's wrong. So another option would be to implement a method on valid dollars or dollars in general called to file and then from file another or we could call it export and import um, or we could do it the way we're doing the UI which is to say we could pass in we could actually implement a, per, a persist method we've got render we could have a persist method and pass in an interface that it would write to and that would be interesting um, in many ways it would be ugly <laughs> Because we would also not only need persist, we would need a de-persist. And um, wow, yeah, I don't, I don't think I like that idea. Um, but you know, if if that's not an okay idea, why is render an okay idea? And actually, when I did render um, back in episode fifty-six, sixty, sixty-six, I don't remember exactly. Um, there was a pretty big outcry saying that this was a ridiculous way to approach the problem. So I could compound that ridiculousness by doing a persist method in valid dollars and in dollars. Hmm. Or an export and an import. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. There's, um... really no easy answers here. Which is why this is an interesting problem, um, of course. I, I'm tempted to do the export and import approach just because it's consistent with render and because it's very different than the way people usually approach this problem, which makes it kind of a more interesting idea. Um, whether or not it's a good idea is a whole other question. It, if we carried that to its extreme, though, what would happen? Well, I guess we'd have an export and import method on every single domain or every single value object. And um, then they'd be that would sort of scatter the 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 way these things are. Is persisted around the system. That doesn't sound like such a good idea. I could just write a two double on valid dollars. Um, see, the one of the things I'm thinking about is is versioning. As the system changes, I don't want to accidentally break my. I don't want to accidentally break my save file by changing something that would cause the export format to change, which inclines me to think that really all the parsing and writing should be done here in save file. Because if I spread that around the system, if I make a change to it, I won't realize what I'm breaking. Hmm. Well, a really simple approach would be to have a two double or a dump. Well, what if we just did two double? We've got two string, what about two double? Or better yet, the, the problem with two double is that if I change the underlying data type to, um, to something else, then we're introducing potential error. But we could have a method like um, to core data type and have that return double. And then in the future, if we change that return value from a double to something else, it would work. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. 
Uh, that's our time. I'm going to go ahead and put these up online and look forward to seeing your responses. I think there's a lot of different places we could take this, and I'm not going to start recording the next set of episodes until I hear your response. So please let me know in the comments what you think. Interesting design problem here. I don't think I've even scratched the surface of all the different ways of approaching it. So I'd like to hear your thoughts. Thanks for watching, everybody, and I will catch you next time.